What's going on gamers? Wanted to give you guys a quick rundown of Root of Nightmares, everything I learned, each mechanic, through each encounter, all the chests, even the hidden red frame puzzle to give you that guaranteed deep sight weapon. Really hope you enjoyed this type of guide. I'm gonna add timestamps for each encounter and I'll see you guys next time. Hey, don't forget to sub either, man. We're juicing it to 100K. Thanks for watching again. I'll see you next time. Gamers, some of you might not know, but when you do the entrance of Root of Nightmares, there is a red border chest code that you can come by throughout the whole raid. There are three rooms and luckily I got three darks. So throughout the raid, I'm gonna show you where these rooms are. You need to do the buff, light and dark, and we'll kind of explain it when we get there. I've never done this, so I just wanted to give you a full demonstration of me learning as well. But if you do these three symbols correct, it could be in light and dark, but I got lucky again. All three are dark. Once we complete them, we'll get a red chest in the end. Sitting at the door of the first room. Okay, come on. So on your way to the first encounter, there'll be a room that you see over here on your right hand side. And Rain is gonna demonstrate how to do this room. We're gonna go in the basement. And this is where you will be getting the first symbol for the red border. It's crazy, it's scary down here. So we need dark, so Rain's gonna shoot dark. We are just following him. He's gonna shoot dark again, and it's pointing him where to go. It's and a, your actions take root. Your actions take root, so this room is completed. So throughout the raid, we need to find two others. First encounter, how do you do it? What do you do? So what I'm doing here is I'm shooting the buff, and then I'm running to the tree. I have sweeping terror and I have a time limit. So I'm gonna run back to the buff and now you're just looking for these blinking dots on these trees. I know I'm speaking pretty simplistic here, but I want you to understand what I'm doing. Right now, my teammates are killing scions and killing tormentors to extend my time. All I'm doing here is running through this pattern and every time that I shoot the tree correctly, I need to run back and get this buff. As you see, it does move. Right now I have 30 seconds left. I have plenty of time left to extend the time limit. My teammates just have to kill the Scions and Tormentors, but they know that I'm at the end of my run, so they're not going to spawn the Tormentor. Just kidding, they just did. So we're gonna carry that Tormentor into the next round. Only thing that really spawns in this encounter is Tormentors, Scions, and Barriers. But as you see, we only have one Runter in this counter, so you're gonna have one Runner while everyone else add clears. Your main purpose of this encounter is to find those scions extended for the runner if the scions spawn on both sides that's okay you can just go find them split the team up since the barrier spawned on my right side the tormentors on the left when you kill this tormentor it extends the sweeping terror time so you and your team do not fail the entrance if you run out of time it will wipe you like i said when you're getting towards your end of your run if you want to save that tormentor and kill him in the next round you can also do that to extend your time. What I'm going to do is run back here and kill the Scion. I'm always gonna stay on my side of the screen. Again, I don't have to kill the Scion right here, but I'm going to anyway. You should always stay on your side because if you teleport to the other side, a Scion might pop up, your teammates might need help and someone could get smoked, but all you gotta do is run around the bonk build and you already know what's gonna happen. So as you see, the Tormentor just spawned on the right. We have 20 seconds. When we kill this Tormentor, it will extend our time. Now we have 46 seconds moving up. I know it's a lot of talking and going over the encounter, but it's pretty simple. Run through the trees. You can have multiple people do this if you want, have people learn stuff. But as you see here, I have to run backwards, find my Scion, and kill them. Some teams might be really fast, and you might be able to back up and not kill Scions, and not have to kill Tormentors to extend your time, but it's kind of just up to you. I feel like if you're learning this encounter, you should pretty much learn all the mechanics. That way, you can take turns running and find out what works best for you. Add clear or killing Scions or Tormentors. But you will do this four times, and as you see, the more you progress, the ad starts spawning up more in the front of the room. So now that I know that we're up here now, we know that we're on the last section. You have to do this four times. Rinse and repeat, get your loot. Of 
Tormentor just spawned. I'm going to go up here and help. Machine guns, I preferred for this encounter. Just because at range, you could take them out. And a nice Arbalist can take out the champions as well. So you don't run into any issues. But overall, there isn't really a preferred loadout. As long as you're ad clearing and killing champions and tormentors, you should have no problem. Chaining wells and chaining supers does make this encounter pretty easy. But again, it's totally up to you and your fire team what you choose. If you want to know what I used for this encounter, I was using Retrofit Escapade with Unforgiven and Arbalist. You got enough time? You good? Yeah, I'm good. There, you're done. And that is first encounter. Hopefully the tips and tricks got you through this. A lot more difficult. So on your way to the second encounter, there is a hidden chest that you can grab and it will drop you a piece of gun or a armor from this raid. That would be on your way to the second encounter. But if you turn around, there's doors up here. So what I'm going to do is put on a sword so I can make it over there. And we have a Tormentor in here. You're going to kill him, and then maybe a raid chest appears somewhere. Ah, yes, the old loot. There you go, chest number one. Three, two, one, go. What I'm doing right away is getting buffed, and I'm going to go across. You're probably going to see me sword flying across. I know that not everybody can do that, but it's just a habit. I'm going to shoot this tree, go back, get dark buff. Now I'm going to head to the dark node on this side instead of crossing over. I know you might be seeing something different here, shooting it now. The reason why I'm doing this, it just doesn't make sense to keep crossing over every tree I shoot. Now I'm getting my dark buff and I'm going to cross over. You have plenty of time. As you see, you have 14 seconds to shoot your next one. I'm heading up to it now. I'm shooting dark. Now I'm going to go back to get the buff. Head to my next tree. Shoot the light that's right in front of me. Now I'm going to head back. Get my light buff. Cross over to the next side and finish my tree. And Lana will finish her tree. So it's kind of like shooting two before you end. I just didn't see a really reason to only shoot one and cross back because that would just make fire teams cross over the middle way too many times. And I feel like this is easier. If you don't agree, that's fine. So right now we need to clear our yellow bars on this floor with having the beast buff and going up to the second floor and doing this all over again. reason why I have a sword out is so I don't get thrown to Uganda. Once I see my teammates are ready, we're going to shoot our buff and cross sides. Yep, sword flying, don't care. As you see, we have plenty of time. We have 10 seconds. I'm going to shoot mine now. Go back, get my buff. Go to the next tree on this side. Shooting the tree now. Going back. Getting the buff. Crossing over to the next side. Yep. See right there? That's why we don't take lifts, ladies and gentlemen. Getting ready to my shoot my buff. I have plenty of time. Seven seconds still. Go back. Hit this one. Look for my dark. The dark should be up here. Jump over this barrier real quick. Shooting my dark now. And go back, get this buff one more time and go to the other side to shoot the final one. I am ready to shoot the last one. My teammate's probably ready too. Shooting now. As you see there, I took the lift twice and it absolutely almost destroyed me. 
the lifts are very annoying. So if you can find ways to get across with an Eager Ed Sword, with Stompies, flying Rampants, or using your Warlock Heat Rises, it will help and avoid mess ups. We are going up to the third floor now. Waiting on my teammate to make sure they're ready. Three, two, one, shooting. Now I'm crossing with my teammate. Lana's gonna cross over. We have plenty of time. Just gonna wait. Three, two, one, shooting my tree. Going back and getting the buff. And gonna stay on this side and shoot the next one. It's going to be right here in front of me. Shooting it, going back, getting the buff. If you're wondering what the other teammates are doing, they're simply just, we're gonna cross here. They're literally just clearing a path for us and clearing the ads so that we don't have ads bothering us while shooting these trees. I'm looking for the next one. It's over here, shooting it now. Going to go back, get the light buff. Going to scoot up all the way to the back here. Shoot this light buff right here, this tree. I'm gonna go back one more time. Make sure my teammates coming back with me as well. Getting the light buff and crossing. And I will finish out the final tree on this side and she will finish the last tree on the next side. Hopefully me taking my time here and showing you this point of view of how you can switch sides and complete the encounter made it easier for you and your fire team. Again, there's many ways to do this encounter, but I felt like this was the easiest since I just learned this mechanic as well. I literally have never done this mechanic before leading up till today. I was always on ad clear, yet I took the easy route, but hopefully this makes you understand this encounter better. All right, the jump puzzle on our way to the planet encounter or the third encounter. How do you get past it? Well, shoot the light buff, field of light, and look for a dark buff. The dark buff saves you from the white mechanic. So what you're gonna do is, is just make sure that you're always having the darkness refuge. So as you go, progress, make sure you keep, keep getting a light and a dark, and don't trust lifts, use swords. What we're doing is following our teammates because we're going to where the chest leads you to. All right, red border chest number two. Yes, those three symbols that you see in the beginning of the raid, we are at the point of the number two area we're gonna run in here we had dark so if we get dark we have to shoot the dark tree your actions take root all right chest number two in the raid once you make it up on this platform up the steps there's a crux you need to shoot down here to open up the raid chest door and the chest will be in this room right here where Merc is and this will give you the second chest of the raid you can grab once per week on your characters once everybody makes it to the top of this jump puzzle this door will open and it will take you to the next encounter third encounter macrocosm before we start this encounter i want you to know that i'm going to show you both ways that i feel like is the best way to teach this we will be doing one through six and also left, right, and middle. So to go over these callouts real quick, it is mirrored. I will have a chart popping up on screen right about now. So you can see what callouts the community is using. This is going to be mirrored, so get ready. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So our first damage phase, we will be doing this. We will be crossing paths. Me and Hypes will kill our lieutenants and we will cross and let each other know what numbers we had. So we have to ignore the top callouts. So if we hear four, five or six, we know that that callout is not headed towards us and the tops will do the same. I know you're probably saying you can type stuff like this, like you would see L1s or L6s, but you have to understand that not every team can type or use that feature. Sometimes consoles don't have that feature and it might take too long. The left, right, middle call out is all four triangles in the room are facing the same way. So this is left, right, middle. Same thing up there, left, right, middle. And then if I was to go on this side, it is the same. Left, right, middle, left, right, middle. 
The reason why that I'm incorporating both callouts is because you have to cross with your teammate anyway, so you can call out their name and I can say hypes, mine was left, Clyde, mine was right, hypes, mine was two, Clyde, mine was three. It's the same call, whatever works. Once we do this, we will put all the darks and all the lights on the side of the room that they need to be at, and that will start the damage plates in the center. There's three plates in the center, one, two, and three. Once you kill the second set of lieutenants, you will see if there is two lights, one dark, or two darks, one light. Once you figure out what the plates are in the center of the room, you will pick this up. Let's just say Merc is dark with me, which he is, and there's two darks and one light. He will pick up one, I will pick up one, and we will slam them on the course corresponding plates. Once we do this, it will initiate a damage phase. Right now, I'm actually testing something live and I wanted to share it with you. If it's two darks and one light, the boss will damage dark, light, dark. If it is two lights, one dark, the damage phase will be dark, light, and dark. A lot of weapons you can test on this. I'm gonna try a sleep route right now. Most people are probably gonna use an Izzy rocket. Maybe some swords, have fun with this. The basic guide for this encounter is that I wanted everyone to learn the mechanics. So please don't stand around, ignore the mechanics, kill the lieutenants, pick up the scout, find out what planet needs to swap with the rooms. What you see is that I'm on Aeons, so I'm actually going to hit a finisher on this Lieutenant when he spawns. The reason why is you might not have heavy because ads are a lot easier to kill without contest mode on. So I'm recommending that when the fight starts and these guys spawn, you should simply hit them weak and hit a finisher on them to spawn heavy for you and your teammates. Now we're gonna get ready for callouts. Uh, mine was five. Lana, four. One, hyped. Five, two. As you see, he told me where to go. I'm gonna plant mine here at two, and I'm gonna stay here. Do I stay on the next place? Yes, you will stay on your side. So right now all the lights are on the light, the dark is on the dark, and this will initiate the middle plates after add clear. You can hit finishers on these guys to spawn again if you like, but I'm just gonna delete this one. Nice little blind. So in the middle, I see two lights and one dark. So Clyde is gonna grab a light and go to center, and the other light person can get left. Lana, I got dark. Uh, which one do I get? I got dark. You don't need to grab one and we only needed one. That was all. We will be going to light left next. Go to the left. Going to the right. If you get to this plate and someone I can't even shoot. If you get to this plate and you can't do any damage, it's because they might have stepped on it too early there or missed your shots like I did. That was the same damage we did last time. It's gated. Yeah. Yep. So there's definitely gated damage here on the plates. So we're going to go back and now we are going to demonstrate what left, right, and middle is. All I'm going to do is demonstrate with my teammate I'm switching with. I'm just going to tell him, hey, left, which is here, right, or middle for the call out. I'm gonna look up in the air. Right is my call. Middle. Just reminding you, it is right. Left. Lana, middle. Stay over here. There's no reason to run back to the other side. Now, I was running back to the other side on day one, but I just realized that there's no reason to run back over there. Just clear your ads. Get ready for deeps. Man down. Uh, right now we're gonna clear up some ads. These guys are gonna spawn again. Again, you could hit finishers on these guys. If you really want to, if you need heavy. I see two lights. I am going to get middle. We'll get left. 
dark. Dark is right. Dark is right. Oh, you got it. I think I have some ads here. So since there's two lights and one dark, it will go dark, light, dark for DPS. So we will use dark. Light, dark, light. Or sorry, light, dark, light. So that's what damage will be light, dark, light. So we're going to do. Let's do light on left. Lana, you have first wall. Light on left. Big thing in my way, can't damage. Now we're gonna go to dark, which is on the right. Come over here. This started final stand, so we can actually sit here and chill. Why is the team just run around on all the plates? That's totally not needed, but it's okay. As you see, he's not taking damage yet. Now he is. And just get the easy kill all the day. You do not need to leave your plate. You can just stay on this final one that triggered final stand. If you do not kill him within the first plate and the flames come out of him like you saw that tornado and he's immune, just simply move to the next plate. Hopefully this helps you get through the encounter. And remember, you can do left, right, middle, or one through six, up to you. All right, so your final red border location for the beginning of the raid symbols. Remember, we had three darks. On your way to Nezarak is up there. We're just going to jump down here and go to rain and hypes. What rain's going to do is complete it for us. Going to shoot the dark and then come up here and shoot that dark node on the tree. And if we did it correctly, a great harvest awaits. That lets you know that your three was accepted and you'll get your red border guaranteed at the end of this raid. All right, gamers, we're at Nezarak. Gonna teach you how to do the white mechanic because most teams aren't gonna be able to go as fast with two runners. Also, the two runners having on swords or like an Icarus dash might take them off damage and you're probably saying, well, Clyde, they could do this, they could do that. I just wanna show you the base mechanic of this raid. So we're gonna two phase to show you the white mechanic twice and just to show you how easy Thunderlord DPS is, that's right. We are using machine guns. It's gonna be the easiest two phase of your life. This did one phase, but I just wanna show you an easy and quick way. If you think you're gonna run out of heavy, just make sure the people that are clearing ads are clearing out the majors and have on Aeons. So we're gonna start this fight here in three. Never mind. Lana, you ready? I'm re yeah. We're gonna start this fight in three, two, one. So I finished my first one. I'm going to come back and get the buff. I finished my second one. I'm going to go back and get my buff. I'm at my third one. Ready for rain to tell me. So if you see he's light there, we know that he is light. So as you see, our buffs are here. So if I get my buff, and I come over here to light and I shoot this. This gives you the flux of darkness. So what we're gonna do is pretty much just sit around and wait and do absolutely nothing. Now that Nezarak has went up top again, your teammates can just simply shoot him in the chest and bring him back down. Pipe some finishing line now. How about you? I'm already done. Okay. So now we're done and we're gonna come over here and get ready for damage. Well. It's going to be a prick, of course. And get ready for damage. Three, two, one, and go. No one has Div on, so our damage is going to be a little schmuck, but that's okay. As you see, boss is just standing here. We got some good RNG, so we're gonna take our time, get him down pretty low, and wait for next damage phase. We actually got good RNG there, so the boss just let us shoot him in the face. Getting ready for seconds. Everything's gonna stay the same. It's just people that are not running, like me or Hypes are doing, they're mainly just keeping the aggro of the boss 
and letting us know if he's light or dark. Brain, I'll shoot chest, you shoot shoulder. Okay. Round two, fight. He's focused on me. He does not like me. As you see there, when you pull Mezorax light. attention, he's very annoying. Said he's light. Did you finish your fourth one? Yeah, I did. Okay, so since he's light, I'm gonna come over here and shoot this. I was a little behind, so what I'm doing there is just leaving the buff there. I know that I didn't get to my fourth yet, but that's okay. We're letting everybody know that the white mechanic is up. You should refresh your buff and go continue your route to finish your route running. Head clear on the right, it's a little tough right now. But again, you're just taking your time with this way. That's what's so nice about doing it this way is that you can literally just take your time. Sometimes you get bad RNG like this and have to go all the way back to the beginning to refresh your buff, but that's okay. Light stun. But I think doing it this way, you just honestly learn the mechanics, take your time, and have fun with it. I'm finishing now. Well. What's nice about that is you could just go around for ammo, hit finishers on the I Colossus. Know. Make sure you're lining up your ammo and get the easy clear here. Again, using div with this does make it simpler, but machine gun DPS is kind of crazy and the boss just kind of falls over. I didn't even initiate using um, a super or anything. I didn't need to. Right now the boss is going to be immune and it's going to set up a final stand which is right now. And yeah, hopefully learning the mechanics and teaching you if you're not fast enough to zoom zoom with the swords and complete the nodes before the white mechanic hit. Now you've learned the white mechanic and you can take it easy and get the easy clear on this guy. And when you finish the raid, your red border is guaranteed right here. As you see, I just picked it up and got a guaranteed red border from that chest. Nice shotgun. Hope you enjoyed this guide, and I'll see you next time.